Hello everyone, welcome to the After Hours Gaming League. I am your caster for the match, Crit Chronic War Catalyst, and we are going to jump right back into it here, because this is Game 2 of Google Ward Search versus Bluehost. If you haven't seen Game 1, please check out the video on my channel. I'm sure everyone on the live stream here has seen Game 1, but uh, that will <laughs> give you guys a little cluing in to the, some of the bands that are already coming out here. Nasus immediately banned away by this blue side. Uh, Nasus absolutely was not shut down in the previous game and became that Nasus that we all know. <laughs> so Susan getting her ban here as is necessary uh, going into this game from the blue host team on the blue side here. We're also going to see that Thrush being banned away um, by the uh, Google Ward Search team here. Thrush is a favorite pick here um, from uh, Genru the Ghost, um, the support for this Bluehost team. So definitely a targeted ban there as well as the Vi ban. Uh, again, aimed uh, just like last game, I believe there was a Vi ban. Uh, definitely targeted at the jungler there to prevent something that's more of a comfort pick and especially with the minor nerfs to cinder hole coming in recently uh those warrior uh enchantment junglers are looking a little bit more delicious nowadays so a damage evi always scary and of course we see the repeat ban again of dr mundo some strong respect here for paraplex in the top lane with that mundo ability Looking, of course, at the bands on Bluehost's side. Uh, of course, Nasus we already spoke about a little bit. Uh, that Cassiopeia, uh, I believe Cassiopeia was in the last game as well. Uh, definitely a comfort pick in the middle lane as well. So smart band there, especially. I mean, we've seen how, how nuts uh, Google Ward Search can go when they get scaling champions. So cutting out those scaling champions away from them, definitely a good choice there. And Sejuani, a very top pick. For shaper of chaos in the jungle so some very targeted bands here on both sides of these teams knowing each other fairly well especially after that last game getting even more in each other's faces there um it looks like that will be the rek'sai annie coming out so going with that rek'sai again uh for something that's got a little bit more of a punch in the early game looking to get something to happen here the Annie, though, I'm interested to see if that's going to be an Annie support or Annie mid lane. We've seen in a lot of the more recent games, uh, those Annie mids coming out and going back to that traditional Annie burst mid lane. So we'll see what can happen here. Uh, that is, a, of course, a flex pick there. She can go to support, just rely on that utility of her AoE stun, especially as we get into the late game here. But that depends on what kind of composition we're going to see coming out. Of course. We want to give a shout out to the Jinx first pick. Uh, when Whenever you don't have enough bands, first pick it away. <laughs> so, uh, great adaptation here. Jinx, a very, a, I wouldn't say the safest champion in the world, um, but as far as AD carries go, she has a lot of range, so she can play it fairly safe. The Morgana with the black shield coming out, going to be very helpful to her. Make sure she doesn't get blown up too hard. They are going to be picking the Graves into that though to try and bully her as much as possible in the early game. Uh, a bit of a turnabout here from the previous match where we're going to see uh, the same champions just on different sides. See who can win this fight a little bit. Of course, Morgana not going to be uh, in the previous game here. But uh, as far as any carries go, we'll see who's able to bully each other a little bit more. And that will be an Annie support coming out here because that's definitely going to be an Oriana in the mid lane. So with that Rek'Sai uh, being the ball delivery system right now, that could be enough um, on its own. We might see a gap closing uh, top laner coming in as well for her. We'll see. I don't see a smite covered yet on that uh, uh, top laner who did just switch it back from a ghost <laughs> since we're not going to be seeing Susan coming out again. So that gives me um, a little bit of an idea of what's going to be coming out in that top lane, but I do want to also take time to point out the Udyr has been locked in. Oh god, it begins. <laughs> Udyr, a very, very uh, top pick here uh, for the jungler for blue side in this game, so to see him on Udyr scares me. 
because uh, I want there to be three games because I like watching these people play and I like the bloodthirstiness. Um, but I fear that seeing that Udyr locked in might mean we only get two games here. Or excuse me, my brain. My brain! Um, <laughs> that blue host is on the blue side this game, so seeing that locked in is good for me, because that means they, I, I, I'm throwing my money behind that. Um, anyways, <laughs> after that little fumble in my casting here, um, we do see the Swain coming out as well in that top lane. Uh, a less frequently chosen champion here. But definitely something that needs to be respected. If you can land the snares with Swain, you will do insane amounts of damage. Because if you can confidently land that CC, and just throw down your Q to make them take additional magic damage from you. And then combo. <laughs> like, throw the bird. Watch that bird eat away their, pi their HP. Uh, sustain yourself on up. It's great. It's beautiful if you can land it. So we'll see just how uh, good this uh, Swain in the top lane actually is. Well, it's going to be a very mechanically oriented champion, but there's not going to be a lot of kill pressure on him early on. Of course, uh, that Maokai not going to be too huge of a threat, but with the Rek'Sai looming about, there is always a kill potential uh, anywhere on the map. So going to have to be respectful with the warding. To make sure that that Rek'Sai doesn't come out of nowhere and surprise him. Get some knock-up CC. Chain that with the Maokai. Create enough time to get enough autos to wear Swain down. Especially pre-6 before he has that sustain. So we'll have to see some cautious play there. But perhaps most deliciously, I, I want to throw out, uh, throw out some attention to the lock-in of the Vel'Koz. And technically, we don't know who's support in this matchup. Because both of them have Ignite currently. Um, so theoretically we could be seeing Vel'Koz or that Morgana in the mid lane. Uh, I'm going to put the smart money on the uh, Vel'Koz in the mid lane though. Definitely Vel'Koz support has some scary poke. Uh, if, you, you, if you can use that displacement, uh, just like Swain, if you can land that displacement, Vel'Koz support can be very mean, but I'm going to assume this is a more traditional Vel'Koz in the middle lane here. And it will be interesting to see how that matchup goes with Oriana. Oriana, of course, can play uh, a little bit of a safer game here. And we're actually, I, now that I'm looking at it, I'm seeing the Ignite on the Annie as well. So very aggressive choices from both uh, sides here. I understand the red side choosing a double Ignite composition a little bit more because of that Swain definitely are going to want to always throw down an Ignite on a Swain in every team fight. So having two uh, Ignite Summoners available to make sure you never have a team fight with one, uh, without one on uh, cooldown there. Or without one off cooldown, I should say. Uh, to make sure you combat Swain properly if he becomes a Nightmare. Uh, and nullify a lot of his sustainability. I, I definitely understand that, but the Morgana taking the Ignite is just a very aggressive choice here. I mean, certainly, of course, uh, as Lifesteal eventually gets built onto that Graves with the Bloodthirster, uh, that's going to be helpful. It can be helpful onto the Maokai if he twisted advances right into the middle of a team. But if he twists advances right into the middle of a team uh, and starts to get that passive heal coming out frequently, you're probably going to be more concerned about the fact that he's being a ball delivery system. <laughs> so we'll see how that ends up working out here for this blue side. Uh, it'll be very interesting to watch the lanes. It'll also be interesting to see what exact style of Udyr uh, play comes out here. Uh, of course, there's very annoying constantly camping one uh, side lane Udyr to just take advantage of his speed up and the stun and the follow-up damage from the laning teammate. Uh, but there's also the more traditional solo Q Udyr who just farms forever. Uh, we'll see which kind of Udyr this is. Obviously, um, going to be going for the Cinder Hulk uh, enchantment. So that's going to uh, incentivize a little bit more action in the lanes and not as much uh, hard farming in the jungle. But certainly not going to be as aggressive in these lanes as the Rek'Sai is. Rek'Sai going to be in and out of lanes uh, as much as she was in last game, I assume here, obviously. Showing up on a different team this time around. 
Or no, on the same team this time around. I'm getting all my games all mixed up, you guys. It's been a long day. Oh, maybe I don't want this to go to a best of three because maybe I'm not able to handle this already. <laughs> but as we load up into this game here, um, it's definitely, we're going to be looking to see uh, that Annie with best Annie skin. Uh, <laughs> with that Flash Tibbers as a main source of engagement here. Of course, Malachi can always twist it, advance into people, uh, but with the Udyr, with the Swain, and with the extremely long range on the Squishies, it's probably going to be impossible to get within range of an actual good target to twist it, advance to without taking a whole heap of damage going in for it. So, and, uh, yeah, it is, in fact, of course, that Velkaz in the middle lane. Annie is opting to start with her W so she, she can charge uh, that stun in case if there's an early invade here. As she, she already has that stun nice and charged up right now. And it looks like they're going to be the ones starting out on this invade. And Velkaz will spot out that Annie is pushing forward very aggressively here. And see the Rek'Sai there as well, but that's only two members. I see the Maokai now as well. Now Ward is going to reveal a lot of people in there, all of them now. So that should signal to the Swain and Udyr to go do some deep warding. But unfortunately it looks like they're not going to even uh, risk that. They're just going to sort of accept the deep warding and play it a little bit safe themselves. See what they can do. Annie. Being a little uh, adventurous there, venturing deep into where uh, I would think Maokai and Udyr would have been. Checks for any pink wards, doesn't spot anything. And that is the first CS of the game! <laughs> uh, good position there uh, from Swain to be able to uh, know to come back, throw that auto in to make sure they get him down. And it looks like that will be... Uh, blue start for this uh, Udyr here. We'll see if that's going to mean Krugs come out. As that ward in the tri bush does now die. Looks like Blue Side is not going to opt to start Krugs here. They're just going to get to lane early, see if they can shove this lane a little bit quicker here. Thinking that that Rek'Sai is going to start with her blue buff. As we see the pool already thrown out onto all minions here. Definitely going for that rush level 2, banking on that they did not do the gromp themselves, which they did not in fact do. Missing a lot of CS actually is the Jinx just to try and get this. And there's the flash stun already with the ignite onto Jinx. Afraid to even kite right now is Jinx because of how low she is. Gonna be chugging through those health pods and unfortunately neither side was level 2 for that engage so neither of them could even get the best of that situation. Whichever side you're uh, pulling for here, neither of them were able to get that level 2 but now with that level 2 up there's the zap. It is missed and so is the Q. Unfortunately both of them were thrown in the same direction there. But because of this really rushed pace here in the bottom lane to try and get this early advantage that CS lead is going to go over to Graves. Uh, unfortunately for him, he did uh, lose some of that to the turret, so it's overall going to be largely equalized. Only one CS for that forced trade here, and it looks like with the spell vamp of Morgana, they're going to get the benefit of this overall. Great Q into the pool there. A lot of damage on Annie. Graves already blinking red here. Before we even have double digits of CS in this bottom lane right now. So lots of action here. Both sides clearly feeling that this lane is going to largely determine uh, what happens in the game after how hard the snowball was last game. So uh, both sides not backing down from this fight here. Taking a little bit of poke on Oriana there in the mid lane. But that's going to happen with the Volkaz. A minor CS advantage right now does get both procs of that W, I believe, uh, off this Velkaz onto Oriana. So Maokai looks to pick up that Scuttlecraft for a little extra vision. Morgana hanging a little bit back in the br brush, respecting uh, the play here. 
the possibility of a uh, Rek'Sai tunneling behind that uh, Scuttlecrab vision. Moody, you're actually opting to not do a level 3 dragon. I'm not sure exactly what that was. Hold on, we need to jump back here. Because I know Udyr spent a long time... Maybe he just got deterred and gave up, unfortunately. Or uh, there was some concern about Rek'Sai was. We're going to keep our eyes peeled on this Udyr here. You know, maybe he's just making a call right there saying, you know, I'm losing half my hit points before this dragon is. Maybe I jumped the gun a little bit. Yeah. Very unfortunate for Udyr there. And Rek'Sai, we'll see it resetting here. Unfortunately, it is full health. But that does mean she knows. She knows Udyr is back. She knows. And she knows where they are. Here comes the knockup. Oh, goodness gracious. Was that a flash? Hold on. We got to watch that one more time. Watch. Oh, goodness. That totally was a flash. Oh, thinking that there was going to be a flash from the Jinx, I believe, or that she was going to turn back around. Jinx deciding just to run through. Misses the knock up there. Instead, still lands it, though, on to Morgana, who's just barely going to make it away. Thanks to Summoner Heal. 30 hit points going to be keeping her alive. Summoner Heal being the hero of the day. Graves, super low as well, though. Was probably around just as many hit points. Taking quite a bit of damage from that Jinx, so overall, it looks like in both games, despite that she swapped sides here, Jinx gonna be showing to be the superior laner over Graves. Uh, not something <laughs> I'm used to saying. But with that, I mean, Graves forced to head back to lane with only a longsword and some pots for sustain here, whereas Jinx able to go back and pick up a full pickaxe here. Going to be a huge advantage in this bottom lane now for that Jinx Morgana. This poor swing missing some of those autos. This auto is so tricky to land here. Ugh. Yeah, the, uh, somebody who swing, uh, some of you play swing, I know that pain very, very familiarly. <laughs> um, yeah, Swain certainly has taken that Maokai quite low here. Uh, and as soon as he hits 6, I'm expecting him to get a little bit even more aggressive there with that full mana uh, bar. Try and burn through some of that, make use of his passive sustain as well. Jinx giving up a little bit of CS. Trying to beat out an engagement here with that Udyr in tow. He is not on top of a ward, so they don't know he's there. I don't believe they saw him go through the tri bush either, so. Stepping forward, here's Morgana. Trying to bait out the fight as hard as they can here. Annie not falling for it, though. There's the flash engage there from Annie. Actually, so much damage, though. It might be too much, and that will be first blood from the Ignite. Baited just a little too hard. Did this blue side, and they're actually going to end up losing the trade there. That's an unfavorable trade. Didn't even get the assist onto Jinx and giving up first blood. <coughs> An unfortunate turn of events there. As Swain throwing down the snare onto himself getting a good bit of return damage onto that Maokai. In this mid lane here we've yet to see either ultimate be used both Sitting ready and waiting here. Malkai does throw the ward down on that blue buff. Gonna opt to not try and steal it here. Gonna be content just to ward it to get the timer. That way perhaps next time around they will be able to get the steal off cooldown. Make sure it's not even contestable here. Now we'll just be Udyr picking it up for himself here. As Rek'Sai going to be starting off this dragon here. I'm not sure if it can be contested. Only Jinx in tow. She does have, she does not have ultimate available rather. So good Q from Morgana. Actually getting a lot of poke on to Rek'Sai who has to be shielded there. And there's the ultimate from Belkaz over the top. Couldn't be able to get the kill. And he's so low. 
Oh, but the blind Q not gonna find its mark, and poor Morgana gonna go down. Actually, the Super Mega Death Rocket was not available. Let's go back really quickly and watch this Jinx who walked the long way around through a ward, and Annie. Oh, made a poor choice to try and come back and help out and just ended up going down to a zap there. Wine zap, very good uh, choice there. Just throw that out, see if she could get Annie. So overall, that's going to be a one for one. Uh, actually, a two for one. Though they did lose Dragon here over to the red side. Udyr is able to counter drum a little bit. In the meantime, punish that as much as possible. And overall, I believe that's probably a favorable trade for this blue side. A uh, bit of a gold lead right now in favor of the red side here. Of course, the passive dragon buff not meaning too much this early on. Definitely good to have going forward, though. And as we get later and later into the game, it's going to matter more and more. Graves already at level 6. Going to force that pop of the heal from Jinx just by having Annie around him. And walking back into it, a little bit brave there. Despite playing cautiously just a moment before popping that heal. Uh, but knowing more Anna was in tow, that stun, not really a huge threat. Who you're going to be showing up, clearing out a ward, going to get those Krugs. Not too much exciting there. Does, of course, have the Chilling Smite. For a little bit better chase rather than the uh, challenging smite we see also common nowadays. There's the flash ultimate for Moriana and she does pick up the Velkaz. Beautiful play there knowing the limits of her champion and speaking of that exact thing. Here's Swain. Oh he does go down to the last turret shot. Unfortunately the root lasting just long enough from the twisted advance. To prevent him from being able to flash out of the turret before the next shot aggroed onto him. So that will be a one for one in the top lane. Both of these uh, laners getting going here. Both of them looking to go rod. Jinx actually blinded. Going to have a huge advantage. This is uh, Graves as the crits come out. And with the stun, Graves going to be able to actually... And he picks that up. In the meantime, Oriana going to be soloed by Udyr, just coming out of the fog of war. Unfortunate for Red Side that that uh, ended up occurring, but regardless, that is going to be a uh, return kill for this blue side, sort of punishing, uh, well, I guess making the most out of the fact that he wasn't there to deal with those two deaths of his bot laners. Oh, and Jinx with the super mega death rocket from deep! Gets the kill on the Graves who backed right in the face of the turret. Oh, that is just an uh, absolute punishment of the disrespect there from Graves. And it looks like Maokai, even with that ultimate running, taking so much damage. Gonna be going down there. And that will be another kill on to Swain, who is officially going, ladies and gentlemen. We are gonna see a Swain in this game. Who's gonna be looking pretty scary? He is, of course, looking to complete that Rod of Ages first, but once that Rod of Ages gets stacking. Hold that thought actually, because Morgana throwing out a lot of harassment onto this Oriana. Not able to quite follow it up is Velkaz. Still so impressed by that dragon play by Velkaz to just no fear throw down that ultimate over the wall and pick up the last few ticks uh, of damage to get that kill. Fantastic play. It really shows that this Velkaz is not uh, sort of a pocket pick. This is something that Blamo uh, is very comfortable on in this game. Jinx great zap on the graves there. Here's turning around trying to get a little answer damage here. We're gonna thinking about going a little bit deep there, but we're gonna think better of it here. As she knows Dragon is coming up in a minute 30 here. So we're gonna opt to just let Jinx keep the pressure on, clear out some vision, crush some uh, tunnels. But here comes Oriana roaming down. But there's the flash tippers engaged. Oh, but the flash return from Jinx 
gonna be able to dodge out. Oriana actually gonna be zoning her away, so Jinx will go down eventually if just to autos. So even though, unfortunately, that ultimate and a full-on combo, I should say, from Graves did miss her. The Oriana run, a little too strong. Velkots trying to make the most out of not following. They're shoving those minions up to the turret, but they're going to be able to defend that in time. The turret in the mid lane still half health. Not too much concern about that there. So overall, uh, Oriana roaming so much this game, making the most out of those plays, doing it absolutely uh, by the book here, showing... You're gonna roam how to make the most out of those plays. And you're revealing yourself here around the mid lane. Beautiful snare there on the Maokai, but here's the Rek side. Maokai a little bit intimidated here, as he should be. There's the challenging smite finally coming out here. But hold that thought here, because Annie, oh, is so zoned right now. She has absolutely nowhere to go. And Udi are going to be securing that kill uh, with those point-blank autos. A little selfish there. Could have given that over to the Jinx. Get her into hyper-carry mode a little bit sooner, but that's all right. Make sure nothing crazy happens. Maybe wasn't sure if her flash was available. Uh, and they will go right over to this dragon immediately after to pick up their first dragon of the game. Here. Now the dragon scores are even one-to-one, -one, and despite... A single kill in the advantage of the blue side here. But there still is a 1k gold lead for this red side. Largely uh, coming out of this mid lane here. Can extend the bot lane as well looking at the Jinx versus uh, Graves discrepancy here. But I mean the main story right now is 30 CS in the lead is uh, Oriana. Who also has 3 kills. This Oriana is miles ahead of everybody else right now in this game. And I believe she has quite a bit of gold to spend as well. Yeah, 2100 gold after getting the local gold bonus as well from finishing off mid turret. She's going to be able to go out, uh, go back and nearly complete it, any item of her choice. The swing going to be able to fight pretty well with that sustain. Lots of people to heal off of there. A fairly even trade as we see Oriana... Waiting on a little bit more gold there. Gonna actually just pick up the needlessly large rod and head back to lane. Floating a lot of gold, unfortunately, does... I uh, want well, too much, I suppose. Does upgrade that trinket to try and get some more wards out for her team. Oh, we see that gorgeous Loot and Zeko animation uh, coming out. Green. Why, why am I questioning whether or not it's Loot and Zeko? For some reason I wasn't sure if it was Echo, but yes. <laughs> Loot and Zeko uh, animation coming out from that Velkaz. Velkaz is not the most mobile champion, uh, but definitely loves having that AP stacked on him hard. So uh, definitely happy to build up that Loot and Zeko when possible. We see Rek'Sai securing up that buff here. Beautiful tunnel network, by the way, showing for the red side. Uh, this Rek'Sai clearly uh, knows how to set up uh, hyper mobility using those tunnels. Can be anywhere on the map essentially, and just jump from one section to another at her leisure here. So he's not able to find the lockdown onto that Udi, or, or excuse me, onto that uh, Maokai here. Okay, I'm gonna wait, just head back after uh, Swain goes to get that farm. I'm gonna finish off that pink ward. Give it a couple slaps, backhanded a few times. There you go. <laughs> kind of twisted advance in, actually. Looking for a fight here. And it does get the better of that exchange. Swain, though, of course, one of the strongest sustaining champions in the game here. Not going to have too many concerns about that, as Udyr is actually a little caught out right now. 
between a rock and a hard place. Oriana thinking about ult throwing down the ultimate, but chooses not to pull the trigger there. Wisely so, as Maokai was a little bit too far away to follow up on that. And Udyr, with those Merc Treads completed, does have some solid MR. Let's see, I'm gonna clear out a pink ward of her on here. Just looking at the items completed, largely equal here in this bottom lane, a slight advantage for Grezo, which is gonna show Jinx actually able to flash away with just a smallest tick of health here. Trying to make the most out of the situation. Saw that Oriana was coming. Trying to turn it back around onto Graves, but simply didn't have the damage to get it done, unfortunately. Not able to uh, get those autos enough onto Graves in time here. We're getting a look into it. Try and make something sneaky happen. Graves gets a little out of position here. And there's a point blank Q. She does get it. Where's the ultimate? No ultimate being channeled. Not going to even be needed though. Not even throwing out the ignite. A very risky play there from that Morgana going into so much damage to not even throw out the ignite or the ultimate. Or she did throw down the ultimate. Pardon me. <laughs> the knock up central here in the mid lane as that turret does go down. Rek'Sai not playing uh, enough credence to the minion damage there. This is going to mean that that mid lane turret is down and now that turret score is evened up 2-2 two to two here. As we're uh, back to a negligible gold difference here. Sub 1k in favor of the red side but not by much here. Uh, the main story uh, has now evolved a little bit to that bottom lane as far as the gold discrepancy is concerned. Uh, the mid lane is starting to even up bit by bit here. Uh, now only 20 gold or 20 CS in the lead is Oriana, but uh, in the bottom lane now, nearly 50 gold or 50 CS lead. Two graves. That's that's painful to see. Despite neither ADC having the best uh, kill score right now. I mean, it shows in the items how far ahead Graves is right now. With that tier 2 boots already completed, some uh, recipe items. And we're going to see the teleport coming in here. Looks like it's just going to secure the dragon. Uh, all five members from both teams are here. Udyr getting left a little bit alone in that turret. Morgana trying to do what she can. Udyr is going to be able to turn on that speed and just run out, though. Now will be... Second turret, or excuse me, second dragon for this blue side, third dragon of the game, going down. As the blue side looks to create a little bit of pressure in that mid lane as they uh, suffer a little bit of pressure in the top lane themselves. Fortunately, no one up there quite yet. Probably Udi are just going to scoot on up there to soak up that experience. Looking at some of the builds here, uh, we see mirrored uh, uh, builds similar looking at least uh, at this stage in the game from the two top laners here. The Rod of Ages a uh, little bit ahead uh, for the Maokai, already fully stacked here, but Swain is catching up so that discrepancy is going to get less and less as time goes on here. Unfortunately, it looks like you're going to be too speedy. Not going to be able to caught, be caught even by a Rek'Sai throwing out those tunnels. <laughs> Accidentally taking the tunnel herself. Going to hook back around to those Krugs. Rek'Sai, of course, uh, far away is ahead of this Udyr as far as the items are concerned. Uh, just because Udyr hadn't backed it, but now that Udyr has gone back, he's just going to buy a straight-up Trinity Force. And now we can see fully here the discrepancy in these junglers. Rek'Sai uh, transitioning into tank now that she's uh, completed the Warrior Enchantment, so uh, not too much damage 
behind, but the tankiness, as far as Rek'Sai is concerned, is going to be lacking severely. Of course, Udyr, with that warrior, or the Devourer enchant, opting not to go for the warrior. Uh, I've seen, you know, that's obviously the more traditional Udyr build is to go for that Devourer. I've seen a lot of Udyrs opting to go for the warrior, perhaps just not having as much faith in the heart farming as normal. Ultra Super Mega Death Rocket does go wide, just barely over Annie's shoulder there. And Udyr focusing on the Graves means that that Annie is going to get away, throwing out Tibbers, or uh, sending out Tibbers to scout behind her to make sure she's alright. Throw a little harassment damage on the Graves. And he is going to... No! Annie cancels her back! What made it out of there? Possibly, I mean... The smite could have come down in time, but Annie certainly didn't make it out of there. Uh, if she canceled her recall, which she unfortunately did, so that does end up being two kills. Took a while to get there, but that was a two kill uh, bonus there for Udyr, who is now 5-0-1. And, and we have reached a scary part of the ga game here. I mean, just like last game here, we had on the blue side the scaling champions. That just get better the longer the game goes on. Velkaz. Uh, the longer the game goes on, the more Swain and Udyr are going to be able to keep people in a position where he can lay out that ultimate for a long period of time. And the longer that ultimate goes out, the more ticks of true damage gets stacked onto everybody. So Velkaz going to be exceedingly well in the late game. Obviously, Jinx, Hyper Carry in the late game. Udyr, with that Devourer enchantment, going to get scarier and scarier as time goes on here. Definitely good to see as well. Um, definitely just doesn't feel like Udyr if you go with more warrior enchantment. Because uh, this Devour, I mean, I don't know. Udyr in my heart is always going to be that feral player. Kind of <laughs> so I'm glad to see the Devourer was what was picked up here in the end. Looking briefly at the ward coverage here, we're going to see not too many wards encroaching in the red side of the jungle, but hold that thought here. The tunnel might be enough to get her out, and yes, Rek'Sai going to make it out alive. Um, but looking back very briefly to this, uh, neither side getting too far past the line of scrimmage here. Uh, a little bit of forwardness from the wards from the blue side, but most uh, wards on both sides very defensive and very reflective of just how even this game is. Looking at the gold right now, it is absolutely dead even right now. Obviously, three kills in the lead for the blue side, but um, the CS discrepancy in that top lane, uh, making up for a bit of that, especially in the bottom lane. Oh, wow. Morgana blown up there by Graves. Caught out doing a little ward duty, and Graves is not the guy you want to run into if you're Morgana. Well, at least if you don't have zonings completed yet, definitely not the guy you want to run into there. Um, so that's another kill going over the red side, and uh, going to get that score a little bit more in their favor now. Annie, got to be careful here. She's quite low. The Super Mega Death Rocket is available. Possibly baiting this out, and yes, does bait it out successfully here. Swain coming in at the last second, and the Death Rocket actually going to pass right through and not do too much on the full health. Rek'Sai. Well, that will be a double kill. Beautiful team coordination there on that bait. Almost caught Jinx her, or cost Jinx her life there. But definitely worth it in the long run as it very much paid off in Udyr. Uh, so confident in being able to land that dragon on his own uh, that he's going to just send Swain away to the top lane as they pick up their third dragon of the game to get that bonus movement speed. Udyr now 7-0-1. I mean, again, looking forward to the next game. Should there be a game three, that Udyr is going to be banned. I was a little surprised. I did not see it picked up here in game one because I, I, if I recall correctly, at least I believe it was not banned. So I was a little surprised to see that Udyr not picked up. Um, but this is certainly a, a good reason as to why I was surprised. <laughs> this is what that Udyr looks like. Uh, when it's picked up for this blue team. Absolutely going to go nuts here. 
Vilkos does now have that death cap complete as well to make that Luden's Echo hurt even worse at this point in the game. Infinity Edge, uh, uh, last whisper completed for Jinx here, uh, opting to go for a little bit more pen early on, as there is a lot of armor starting to be stacked here. Uh, possible Zonia is coming out next item here from this Orianna uh, with that amp tone. Hold that thought though, because Grace dashing back, trying to get to safety, throws out everything, but is not in the end able to deal with Udi or just too tanky at this stage of the game with that Warden's Mail completed. Oh, chunked out so hard as Oriana, or uh, does Oriana onto Morgana here. Simple QW combo, taking out more than half her health. This, uh, I mean, she needs to be very careful here. I mean, this is very risky stepping that far forward. Hootier with that split push is able to take down that bot turret, finally finishing the outer turret. There's the pop on the Talisman of Ascension, but not really sure what they want to do with it. Perhaps it was just feigning uh, reinforcements there to try and back them away, give Maokai a little bit more time to get into that bottom lane. The Super Mega Death Rocket just barely goes wide over Ruxai's shoulder there. Jinx picking up an early fervor enchantment here, thinking she's probably going to have to deal with a lot of extended team fights, a lot of kiting here. Um, definitely, I mean, with that Rexai and with that Maokai, uh, as tanky as they're getting right now, they're going to just dive in and try and look for that Jinx, try and get to her, try and slow her down. Um, so that fervor enchantment going to be very helpful to make sure that she can kite away effectively. But I mean, I mean, just looking at the scores here, it seems like the real threat is Udyr. I mean, I don't. This is one of those games where just it's, Udyr is the threat, and how do you deal with an Udyr? <laughs> um, they're gonna have to find some good fights where they can actually get people picked off before uh, everybody can get into position. Let Udyr just run into the enemy backline and start doing his thing. But Udyr, speaking of doing his thing, split pushing up, counter jungling along the way here. And as this red side looks to see, they actually do land the Tibbers onto that Jinx, who's going to go down immediately here. There's a lot of turret damage coming in. Swain tanking it up quite a bit. Does eventually go down. Ruxai going to barely die to the last tick of the night there. And speaking of ticks of Ignite, the pool taking away, finishing off Oriana. And that's going to be a 3 for 2 in favor of the blue side. A very greedy dive there. Not paying off enough. Flash! From the ante again, the last auto gonna be enough to get the kill. But in the meantime, despite all of this effort, here's Udyr in the top lane, taking your whole base as Udyrs are wont to do. Going overall four for four, not the fight you gotta have if you're in this position where you have a, a five on four advantage because Udyr is doing a split push thing. Now Maokai actually going to just back right there on top of a ward, fearing that Udyr is going to be lurking somewhere nearby. But perhaps Udyr might actually... No, Udyr is just going to go back. I was thinking perhaps he might get a little uh, adventurous himself there and go for a Baron uh, right off of those back timers, but going to think better of it and just go back. Complete up... Uh, Well, not really complete of anything. Complete up some home guards here, I suppose. Uh, and start building um, some damage here. Or some more attack speed here. Looking to just go insane here. Now that he's got the Devourer stacking up quite a bit, he's going to just look to speed up his auto attacks as much as possible here. Where's that Udyr at? Where are those Devourer stacks here? 89 stacks, I believe that is. Um... So we're going to just speed up his attack speed as much as possible to get those Devourer stacks out more frequently. And this becomes somebody you can't deal with. I mean, Dragon's about to spawn. Udyr, way deep. 
but it doesn't even matter. Udi is so threatening in and of himself. The red side now knows where he is. Can't really do anything about it. They're afraid to even collapse onto him. And that allows blue side to reposition him properly here. Now Swain way in their face. Giving uh, the backline plenty of time to zone away Graves, who's now a non factor in this fight. And there's Annie getting absolutely blown up. Udyr uh, is able to lock her down just long enough for Velpaz to throw out the ultimate and get the last hits he needs. And there you go, that's another two kills unanswered. Another dragon going over to the blue side here. And very keyly, that is the fourth dragon for blue side. So any more dragons going forward are going to mean that Dragon 5 huge buff is going to be thrown onto this blue side team. And now Udyr starting the bear. Jinx come in, or excuse me, uh, Morgana coming in throwing out just a little bit of extra poke to make sure that turret is secured. And just that little eensy bit of pressure onto that turret is plenty to make it so that this bearing goes down uncontested, perhaps not even known. And looking to poke out very slowly, very cautiously into her jungle here. Well does she know the Baron already taken. Not even going to venture too far out. Only now with Maokai, she <laughs> very cautiously wore. I mean, that's what you got to do at this point, but it's just so unfortunate. I mean, no way to know. She just now finally sees that the uh, Baron is gone. So now they know that Swain, that Udi are able to split push even harder than they already could before. And with that top lane inhibitor still down, they're going to have to devote resources there. Maybe you're split pushing in that bottom lane, give me plenty. And with that Baron buff in the mid lane... Wow, uh, actually Oriana probably could have thrown out the ultimate there and got a kill on the Jinx. Perhaps. Maybe not, but I mean, the QW alone getting more than half her hit points. But there's a combo! Speaking of combos, coming out from... Oh, Velpas, who then gets the last hit needed from the Jinx, who obliges with the Super Mega Death Rocket. And that is, there's the shutdown on the Velpas, does end up coming out in the end. And just the last bird getting to him in the nick of time to make sure Swain doesn't go down. Overall, a 1 for 4, and that's got to be the game here. As we see now, a, two, a 10k gold lead. With these barren up minions in the base, with a new deer, with a jinx, with a swing teleporting in. There's the game going down here. That's the Nexus. Dies just after that Maokai goes down, and that's the game going in favor of the blue side. Confirmed OP is blue side. Does not matter which team it is, as we're now going to go to the third game after watching this blue host victory here. And now we had, we learned from the first game, some champions that needed to be banned <laughs> going into game two. And those adaptations were made. The Jinx was picked away. Um, the bans were altered as needed. But now let's see if the red side can adapt equally as well. Let's see if this uh, Google Ward search team can adapt as needed as well. That Udyr, absolutely gotta go. 9-0-3, never had an answer for him. 16.6k gold, the highest, almost the highest, second only to uh, Velkaz and Oriana. Well, actually second to a few people now that I look at it. But beating out Jinx, beating out Swain, beating out Maokai, uh, definitely crushing Rek'Sai. By far and away had way more gold than he should have, uh, outpaced anyone else in the game. And let's just look at his damage here, see how much that Udyr was able to deliver. As much, uh, almost more than the Jinx did, uh, which is absurd um, in this game. So uh, almost more than anyone on the red side as well. So definitely got to be concerned about that Udyr though. The Velkaz, not to be uh, snubbed at himself. Jinx didn't perform too well though. It wasn't nece necessary to pick away and she did end up doing her job in the late game. Getting a lot of damage out there. Was able to destroy, just tear through those turrets alongside Udyr. But Velkaz as well, again, 
highest damage in the game, I believe, beat Oriana. Yes, he did. So, that Velkos got into that stage in the game where he was doing a lot of damage. He had that penetration. He had absurd totals of AP with that death cap Blue and Zekko completed. And, again, on his ultimate, on all his abilities with that passive, the ticks of true damage is already so absurd with this penetration as well from the Void Staff. Was able to do so much damage. This game three is going to be a very contentious game, and I'm very interested to see how these picks bans are going to change going into that. But if you uh, aren't going to stay tuned for that game three, of course, these videos will be uploaded afterwards to After Hours Gaming TV and the channel you are watching now. If you're one of our beautiful live streaming audience members, but we are going to get out of this cast so we can get into game three and figure out. Who will win in the final match between Bluehost and Google Ward Search? Stay tuned for Game 3.